Letters to Muriar Darkus, King of Ireland, by St. Anselm of Canterbury, 1033-1109. to This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. To Miriar Darkus, by the grace of God, illustrious King of Ireland. Anselm, servant of the Church of Canterbury, sends greeting and his prayers, and may the mercy of God ever guide and protect him. I give thanks to God for the many good things I hear of your Highness, among which is this that you cause the people of your realm to live in such peace as that all good men who hear of it give thanks to god and desire for you a long life for where there is peace it is possible for all the well-disposed to do what they choose without being disturbed by the bad wherefore your highness by whom god has done these things may most certainly look for great reward from him Upon this foundation of peace it is easy to build the other things, which are required by the religion of the church. I therefore pray for the permanence of your good dispositions, that you may examine where there are any things in your kingdom which need alteration, on account of the reward of eternal life, and for the continual increase of God's grace in you so that you may earnestly seek god helping you to amend them for nothing which can be corrected should be thought trifling since god sets down to the account of all not only the evil they do but likewise the evils they do not correct when they can and the more powerful those who ought to correct them may be the more strictly will God require of them in proportion to the power mercifully entrusted to them that they should will and act rightly. Which seems chiefly to apply to kings, since they are known to have the chief power among men and that which is the least opposed. But if you cannot do everything at once, you ought not on that account to give up trying to go on from good things to better since god is wont graciously to perfect good intentions and good efforts and to requite them with perfect bliss i hear that marriages are dissolved and rearranged most irregularly in your kingdom and that those nearly related to each other scruple not against the canonical prohibition to live together, either under the name of wedlock or in some other fashion, and this they do openly without incurring any censure. Also, the bishops who ought to be the pattern and example of canon rule to others are, so I hear, consecrated irregularly either by a single bishop or in places where they should not be ordained these and other things which the greatness of your wisdom shall perceive to need correction in ireland i beg adjure and advise you as one whom i greatly love and whose progress in all ways i long for to seek to correct in your kingdom according to the advice of good and wise men. And I pray God that you may go from your earthly kingdom to the heavenly kingdom. Amen. To Muriar Darches, the illustrious King of Ireland, Anselm, the Archbishop, servant of the Church of Canterbury, faithful obedience with prayers, by the earthly mayest thou attain to the heavenly kingdom. Since many things are told me of your excellence which become the royal dignity, we rejoice greatly, and give therefore devout thanks to God from whom is every good thing. I am also sure that he who gave you his grace to do the right things you already perform will also give you a desire to do whatever you shall perceive he requires of you beyond what you are doing. Wherefore, illustrious son and well-beloved in God, 
i beg that you will with the utmost speed and care amend those things in your realm which you may perceive require amendment according to the religion of christ for god has placed you on a royal height that you may govern your subject people with a rod of equity and that whatever among them is against right and justice you should with that same rod smite and remove and yet it is said that one thing is done among that people which very greatly needs alteration for it is entirely contrary to the christian religion for it is said that men exchange their wives for the wives of others as they might exchange one horse for another or any other thing for something else or they abandon them from mere fancy without cause or rule how wrong this is any one understands who knows the christian law if therefore your excellence is unable to read for yourself the sayings of the holy scriptures which forbid this infamous exchange desire the bishops and clerks regular who are in your kingdom to read them to you so that having learnt them you may perceive with what anxious care you should investigate and take measure for the correction of this evil it is also said that in your realm bishops are elected at random and appointed without any distinct place for their episcopate and are ordained bishop by a single bishop as any priest might be now this is quite contrary to the apostolic canons which direct that those who are thus instituted and ordained are with those who consecrated them to be deposed from the episcopal office for a bishop cannot be appointed according to god unless he have a fixed parish and parishioners whom he is to superintend for even in secular things none can have the name or office of a shepherd who has no flock to feed it lowers also not a little the episcopal dignity when he is raised to the pontificate who knows not the limits of his rule nor whom he certainly governs by the ministry of the episcopal order also none should be ordained by less than three bishops both for many other and reasonable causes which the short space of a letter has no room for and also that the faith good character and wisdom of him who is to watch and rule may be testified to by suitable and legal witnesses i therefore pray exhort and advise that your excellence will take measures to have these things in your realm amended so that the reward which you have obtained from god for other good deeds may be increased to you for this finally if you do on examination find aught in yourself or those who have been given you to rule which doth in any way resist god's will strive carefully to amend it that when you shall leave your earthly kingdom you may come to the heavenly kingdom amen as to our brother cornelius whom your highness asked me to send to you i have to say that he is so occupied in attendance upon his father that he could not be separated from him without peril of the father's life nor could he take him along with him for he is very old indeed End of letters to Muriardicus. King of Ireland by St. Anselm of Canterbury